Welcome everybody. Today we are going to discuss the Ayurvedic art of skin assessment. And this topic is part of our Ayurveda Health Counselor certification program. My name is John Immel. This is what I look like. Now let's take a look at uh, complexion on the skin. So, uh, and also blemishes. Um, so normally a person should have no blemishes or breaks in the surface of the skin. Here we see this in this photo on the right that uh, there's uh, no acne, no moles, uh, warts, freckling, or anything really. The skin's complexion is very smooth and uh, that's a sign of uh, uh, a really uh, healthy skin. And in this case, this client has more kapha skin. It, their skin almost has a creamy quality to it, actually. And uh, I like to differentiate uh, and call it some attention to this creamy kind of skin. Uh, notice, by the way, she has good coloring in her skin, too. A lot of times with kapha individuals that have creamy skin, uh, their skin will be very pale as well uh, due to thickness of the blood. But whenever I see that the skin is very unctuous and thick and almost rich or creamy looking, I'm going to uh, wonder about thickness of the blood. Is the blood very thick? Is it very, you know, it probably could be. Now, it doesn't mean it's out of balance. In fact, this case, the skin looks quite balanced. Uh, this person looks like a balanced kapha. They have exuberance. An imbalanced kapha uh, would be even more sluggish. But she doesn't seem to appear sluggish here. And, uh, well, anyways, uh, creamy skin refers to unctuousness or thickness of the skin. And uh, not really the color of the skin. I'm not really talking about the color, but really the oiliness and thickness of it. Um, here and uh, creamy skin tends to have a smooth glow to it. It looks a little plump and also uh, radiant. Think of baby skin. A baby skin often has a little creaminess uh, associated with it. And really it's a sign of rich blood plasma. A person who has a more dull complexion uh, where the skin has lost their natural glow and this photo isn't a quite as, uh, it, it, this is m slightly dull, really. In fact, in this uh, photo, what I see here actually is just this brown coloring around the eyes that's, uh, that is uh, showing some uh, stress here. Uh, and it could be kidney stress, although when I see that brownness to it that looks almost like a sallow complexion, and I think of that as uh, a little bit more pitta here. So not exactly the best example of a dull complexion uh, here. It can get much duller than this, where the skin loses its natural glow. And if we come up with a photo of that, I think there is one photo of that, that um, if it comes up, I will point it out again. Uh, but dull complexion can indicate weakness or deficiency in the liver and kidneys. So the liver and kidneys are your detoxification organs. And if they're not working well, then the skin is going to lose its vibrant color as toxins build up. Another cause of dull complexion can be poor circulation. So the liver and kidney could be doing their job, but if things aren't circulating well, then the toxins aren't getting flushed out of the skin and the skin starts to look a little dull. In fact, this person has duller skin. Um, although this, I would characterize this skin as more ruddy here. Uh, and also this uh, heat condition flaring up so if you ignore the redness in this skin, you see that the skin is dull and ruddy here. Uh, really around the eyes, the skin has very poor coloring in it. Uh, it looks a little yellowish to me. Uh, you see that the complexion is not smooth even. So there's been um, you know, more chronic uh, effect on the liver. And then when you add in the redness here, you see the doshas are really flared up in this person. So a rough or ruddy complexion here referring to the texture of the skin uh, indicates liver issue. And uh, last week uh, we celebrated Thanksgiving and I ate a fennel bulb. And gosh, I must have some reaction to fennel bulbs because my skin was ruddy for about 12 hours after that. And I just felt terrible. 
Uh, my face turned ashen and a little bit puffy. There was a pallor to it and the skin was just pretty ruddy. Uh, and the next day though, my skin was back to normal. And so I clearly had some negative reaction from that fennel bowl. My body didn't like it. I'm not gonna eat that again. Um, so yeah, uh, ruddy skin. If a person has uh, ruddy skin, you're gonna think about supporting the liver. Gaducci, Amalaki are good uh, liver support herbs and licorice root, shatavari, depending upon your constitution, licorice root and shatavari are more vata pacifying and building, nourishing, Gaducci and Amalaki, uh, more for pitta and kapha, uh, a little bit more cleansing. Beta carotene rich foods can help uh, and levotonics. Uh, to support the liver, like applesauce and coconut oil. I think of coconut oil as like a really superior um, liver tonic and uh, ghee as well. <clears throat> Ghee's pretty good. I think coconut oil is better for liver tonifying than ghee. All right, what about pimples on the skin? Well, we could have blackheads. Uh, we could have whiteheads. Um, cystic acne. So what are blackheads? Blackheads are a type of comedo, uh, which is a, or comedo, which is a clogged hair follicle. And the pore gets stretched open and uh, dead skin cells in the uh, open pore react with oxygen and turn black. So it's not trapped dirt in your skin. Uh, the, a recurring blackhead may indicate excessively oily skin. So sometimes people will get them on their nose because their nose is pretty oily. Whiteheads are like blackheads, but in whiteheads, uh, the in blackheads the pore is stretched open. In whiteheads, the pore remains closed and the pore becomes clogged with sebum, dead skin cells, and debris, and it actually becomes infected. Every whitehead is an infection, and the white of that whitehead is the pus that builds up as a result of the infection. So whiteheads tend to be more red, inflamed, and painful. And here you see uh, a few whiteheads on this person's skin down near their chin. And you can see that they're inflamed more. And you can see that the pore is closed and that there's pus uh, trapped there. So whiteheads, um, and really all infections in Ayurveda come from sweetness and oiliness in the blood. Or I shouldn't say come from, because uh, you could get an infection even if your blood is not sweet or oily, but sweetness in the blood and oiliness in the blood tend to aggravate infections. And, uh, and so uh, these whiteheads are aggravated by sweet or oiliness. Now, that doesn't mean a Vata person should remove sweet taste and oily taste from their blood. Vata people need sweet and oily taste in their blood to stay strong. So um, we don't want to oversimplify this matter either. But the whitehead is really a classic um, abscess, right? Uh, abscess is a pocket type wound um, that, you know, beneath the surface and your body tries to push it out of the body. So it kind of comes to a head An abscess your body wants to bring the abscess to a head. And here we see that these whiteheads have been brought to a head. Uh, popping a whitehead can make matters worse. Uh, it's not a good idea to pop them because it pushes the pus and the infectious bacteria deeper into the skin. Acne um, is generally a hot, oily pitta condition in Ayurveda. You have to get this, the richness, sweetness, and oiliness of kapha mixing with the heat of pitta, and that is generally the cause of acne. And um, and usually ama is involved, so uh, there's toxicity. Uh, um, because the, there's heat involved, we're gonna, you normally assume that the liver is overwhelmed by the toxins, that it's not less kidney issue, more liver issue. So when the liver can't detoxify, the body's getting hot, um, the, there's a buildup of toxins that creates a ripe environment for infection. There's a bit of oiliness if the person's eating rich oily foods and that comes together in a perfect acne building storm. So um, ama 
uh, if your liver can't re uh, can't release the ama, then it starts releasing out your skin, and the skin is very easily irritated by toxins from the blood. Um, that irritation uh, or that skin uh, will become inflamed, red, and the and that's where you get the a acne. So the source of those toxins, even though the liver is the thing that's aggravated, it could be fermentation in the digestive tract that is the actual source of those toxins. Um, or it could be just straight up liver weakness. But usually there's a toxic burden from fermentation on the digestive tract that eventually aggravates the liver. And then there's a toxic buildup uh, in, and the skin uh, gets affected by that. That's a classic case, but not it may not even be the majority, but it's the most common. Uh, so, yeah, think about that uh, pathogenesis. Hormonal imbalances can cause acne too. That's really common. Uh, chemical sensitivities, air pollution, irritants in the water or skin products or even your laundry detergent, etc. can also cause uh, reactions. So the remedy is to clean your ama, support the liver, uh, reduce the root of the ama if you know where it's coming from. Uh, herbs like Gaduchi are good liver supporting herbs and avoid angry, hot, fiery pitta foods such as fried foods, freckles, moles, and liver spots. From the Western perspective, freckles are small brown spots on the skin uh, due to UV exposure. Uh, ultraviolet light from the sun stimulates melanin production and that increases the amount of freckles. Of course, some people are born with freckles. Uh, the freckles are more commonly found on people who have the pheomelanin skin type, the lighter, fairer skin type. Now, moles, a mole occurs when the melanocytes in the skin grow in clusters. And liver spots um, are due to overactive pigment cells and that's accelerated by exposure to UV rays. So freckles and liver spots are pretty similar. They're overproduction of pigment, but moles are a, when a cluster of those melanocytes grow uh, in a particular spot. So there's an example of a liver spot. And um, I got, I. I, I got a small liver spot on my arm a few days after a parasite infestation in Morocco. So this is not a picture of my liver spot, uh, which is on my arm. And it was about an eighth of an inch, a small liver spot, really. Uh, but I got alarmed by it. Probably I, I freaked out because I had a parasite too. And, um, but I thought this liver spot was cancer, but it wasn't cancer. It was just a liver spot. And... It has grown slowly over time from an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch over the 15 years that I've had this spot. Uh, so it is just slowly growing. But <coughs> it's interesting that it happened right after a parasite infestation. And I assume my liver was uh, aggravated at that, at that time. So um, as you mentioned before, freckles are more common in fair skin. So they're most common in pitta types. Um, and Dr. Laud uh, describes all freckles, liver spots, moles, and moles, not all other blemishes, but freckles, liver spots, and moles as a sign of liver stress. Uh, I think of, um, yeah, I think of moles as a vata uh, pushing pitta condition uh, in the uh, liver, that's when I notice it uh, most frequently is when a client of mine has a serious vata uh, condition or uh, deficiency in their liver and that uh, aggravates vata and pitta and then the mole forms. Uh, there are uh, There is a case or, uh, or times when I've seen that happen in uh, kapha blocking pitta also, but for example of this um, was uh, in a client that I have with uh, anorexia. And when uh, she had anorexia, she, uh, when she was at her lowest point weight-wise uh, and very deficient, 
suddenly uh, she had uh, mo she, uh, moles appeared all over her body. So, um, so I think that's a that's a great example of that. And in cuff individuals, you may get some growth of moles here and there, especially if there's a lot of ama uh, that could provoke that, and the liver is very weak. Uh, but I think it's more typical in Vata Pitta. This is my experience, uh, although we'd have to do a, a real scientific study on that to, um, to draw a hard and fast conclusion. So based on my personal experience, Vata Pitta. Uh, the skin and liver have uh, functional integrity with each other, which I want to really mention uh, since I don't think we've mentioned it so far. We've talked about how digestion uh, relates to skin, right? Good digestion nourishes your blood, which nourishes your skin. Uh, bad digestion causes ama, which irritates your skin. And we've talked a lot about how blood and skin are related, that good, strong red blood makes vibrant, colorful skin. And, um, and uh, blood plasma, whether it's too much fluids or not enough fluids or too much ama, uh, can, or hormonal issues and stuff, all these things in the blood can affect uh, the quality of the skin. We've talked a little bit about how kidney uh, kidneys, through um, their inability to detoxify or their inability to release fluids or oh, the uh, excess release of fluids from the kidney can affect the skin. Um, but also the liver is, has such a strong effect on the skin. The liver, again, being a detox organ, uh, but the liver also uh, really regulates a lot of the internal heat in the body. So because of liver as a detox and liver as an organ of heat and pitta, um, and also the amount of bilirubin that the liver releases into the blood, all this has an effect on the skin. So we should be always, whenever we're looking at um, uh, especially complex issues of complexion or blemishes on the skin, we should uh, be thinking about whether the liver is involved. So pitta in the liver, um, which is called Rainjaka pitta, the specific pitta in the liver associated with bile uh, in Ayurveda. Uh, figuratively, that's the, uh, that provides color to all the tissues, including color of the skin. And um, pitta in the skin is a subdosha pitta called brajaka pitta. And that is, brajaka pitta refers to the amount of heat and, uh, and the circulation in the skin. And so here we see this coded in uh, the Ayurveda concept of subdosha, rainjaka pitta, brajaka pitta. We see the link between the liver and the uh, skin sort of in the basic underlying theory of Ayurveda. Uh, linked by Pitta, the Rainjaka and Brajaka. So jaundice in the liver of the liver. Uh, ja jaundice is a condition when, because of uh, liver uh, damage, bile is being released into the blood, which turns the skin yellow. And when the skin's yellow, it's called jaundice. Jaundice, and it is uh, it's a medical emergency. You should go to the doctor uh, immediately if you have jaundice. Um, hepatitis C or, uh, or other hepatitis uh, conditions can cause itchy skin and rashes. An underactive liver, a very weak liver, can cause darker skin. This is why vata people tend to have darker skin than kapha or pitta people. Why? An underactive liver doesn't metabolize estrogen efficiently. And this higher estrogen um, in the body... Uh, causes more melanin production and hyperpigmentation of the skin. So uh, also, again, the weak liver can't process toxins and that uh, causes those toxins to be released through the skin. All right, so here's just some examples of these different blemishes. Here's a lot of freckles. Notice the fair skin with the freckles. Here on the uh, right side, the multiple moles in a vata pitta uh, constitution. This looks, we can't see the whole person here, but looks like it's uh, more vata pitta. What about warts? Warts are raised bumps on the skin due to HPV. And there's approximately 150 strains of HPV that are responsible for different types of warts. 
Um, let me give the name of that. HPV is human papillo ma papilloma virus. Human papilloma virus, and uh, it uh, it's a it's a viral uh, infection. So. <clears throat> Usually you get finger moles on uh, excuse me warts on fingers and toes, the back of hands and the feet. And uh, moles are more likely to develop around broken skin. So your hands are exposed or prone to cuts and scrapes and hangnails, etc. and the virus enters the top layer of the skin through the scratch or cut. Biting your nails can cause warts to spread over your fingertips. Uh, many strains of HPV are transmitted through direct contact, like holding hands, sharing a towel, or uh, walking on the locker room floor. Warts are generally flesh-colored. They're not dark like a mole. And they have a rough appearance and a rounded top. Sometimes you get planter's warts. This is when the, mole, the, when the wart happens on the bottom of the feet. And... Um, because you're standing on your feet, the pressure causes the wart to grow into the skin. And they look like small holes in the foot surrounded by hard skin. <coughs> Flat warts usually grow on the face or the thigh or the arms and they're small and usually not very noticeable. And they have um, a flat top looking like as if they've been scraped. So filiform warts, um, here's an example of a filiform wart and they tend to grow around the mouth, nose, and sometimes the neck, chin, and the eyelids. They're sometimes called facial warts. They tend to be the same color, color as the skin and they look different to most other warts. They have like a spiky appearance. Uh, they're long, narrow projections um, that extend one to two millimeters from the surface of the skin. And they have an unusual appearance due to the specific strain of HPV that causes them. So a remedy for warts uh, includes antimicrobials like neem, turmeric, or vidunga uh, that can fight the infection that causes warts. And uh, for most people, if they're exposed to HPV, it's really the strength of their immune system that determines whether or not the wart uh, develops. So um, <clears throat> I guess a preventative here would be strengthening your immunity with Chiwen Prosh. Um, but you probably, you know, you're not gonna take Chiwen Prosh forever. Uh, so you have to also think about balancing your doshas to keep your immune system um, strong. And uh, stubborn warts can be treated with uh, liquid nitrogen called um, uh, cryotherapy and this freezing kills the active uh, virus. <clears throat> uh, cyrotherapy. I think it's cyrotherapy. It looks like there's a typo there. Um, let's see here. Skin tags. Skin tags are a small, soft, benign skin growth. They're generally a very harmless. Uh, Dr. Lod told us that skin tags are a sign of poor fat metabolism. They tend to develop in areas where there's skin friction, like in the armpits or the uh, folds of the groin or under the breasts. And I, this is an interesting story. I had a skin tag for 10 years, which disappeared after I took Diflucan. Remember that tinea infection I was talking about earlier? Well, um, that uh, eventually um, I, I took Diflucan and that was how I got rid of that, uh, anti -fu uh, that fungal infection. And within a few days, the uh, skin tag disappeared. So, um, so and our, it was, it, the skin tag was in my armpit and uh, the tinea infection uh, was affecting my armpit. In fact, my uh, lymph nodes in my armpit were really swollen and painful. And as soon as that swelling and pain went down, the skin tag disappeared. So uh, even if uh, friction is a significant factor in 
uh, skin tag formation, uh, the cause is multifactorial, right? We want to look at the whole body and, um, and some of these things which Western medicine uh, says are, you know, uh, are not causes um, experience uh, can show otherwise, even if um, statistical analysis um, in the whole population uh, doesn't actually show it as uh, significant. Uh, there was a clear relationship between this tinea infection, the swollen lymph node, and the skin tag uh, for, for me. Now, interesting thing is after three years later, uh, the skin tag came back in the same area. So, I uh, wonder why that happened. All right, spider nevi, a collection of small dilated blood vessels close to the surface of the skin. And the cluster appears like a, a, a web-like shape. So um, multiple spider nevi is a common sign of liver disease, particularly alcohol-related cirrhosis. And it can also occur in pregnancy due to high estrogen levels. And most cases don't require treatment, uh, laser treatment can reduce the appearance, but since it could be a sign of liver disease, it should always be examined medically. All right, well, a brief thing I want to mention about the location of skin disorders. That uh, pimples tend to form in areas uh, that have problems on them. So uh, certain locations on the skin uh, may be linked to specific disorders, but it's not definitive. I just want to mention that, that um, I've certainly had the case where a pimple would uh, show up in a particular part of my body where there was a problem way beneath the surface of the skin. Uh, but it's not always the case. So we have to think about that. Uh, and let me give you some examples. So... Uh, again, I got uh, several infections from being in the tropics. I mentioned the blastocystis, the tinea, and here's a third one, H. pylori. Uh, in fact, I was pretty much a mess after all that traveling in the tropics, and it took uh, uh, a while for me to heal my body. There were multiple stages with that, and Ayurveda uh, was really um, incredible for helping me to heal from all of that. And then in a few different areas, um, I use Western medicine as well with great success. Uh, so uh, anyways, uh, with this H. pylori infection, I used to, when I had H. pylori, I used to have burning and pain in my upper epigastric area. And I used to get a recurring pimple there. And uh, using herbs, I was able to heal my H. pylori infection and then the pimple was gone and it's never returned. Um, because of TMJ, I used to have inflammation in my uh, jawbone joint here. And so I used to get a pimple right behind my ear and uh, where the jawbone connects to the skull, really right over in that area. And now that my uh, TMJ is better, I don't get a pimple there anymore. <clears throat> so acne uh, specifically around the chin can be related to puberty, the menstrual cycle, or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, it's uh, chin, related, chin acne is typically related to excess androgens, which overstimulate oil glands and clog the pores. So that's another location-specific uh, sk skin disorder. Uh, acne around the chin, often I think of it as kapha or menstrual cycle uh, related. Acne can come in the T-zone too. See this uh, T here? Well, the bottom part of that T is in the chin. The upper part is really nose and forehead. And I think of um, acne around the nose and forehead area as more pitta related, upward moving, and related to upward moving heat. And on the chin is more kapha related. All right, P uh, on, what about on the uh, acne on the chest and back? People with severely weakened liver function are known to experience a rash on the chest in some instances that may show a, a correlation between the liver and the chest. Um, I used to get acne on my chest and back whenever uh, I ate wheat, and that uh, uh, was due to a mild intolerance or mild allergy to the wheat. And um, when I stopped eating wheat, that went away. Uh Skin problems underneath the eyes can be associated with kidney and liver. 
lung patients with diminished kidney function uh, are more likely to have these little acne, uh, these little white uh, spots underneath the eyes called uh, milia. All right. So <coughs> Excuse me. That concludes uh, the assessment of complexion and blemishes on the skin. A big topic here. Uh, we've talked about, uh, at this point, color of the skin, uh, assessing temperature of the skin, thickness of the skin, right? Thickness of the skin being uh, related to the thickness of the epidermis, uh, the amount of water retention, and the amount of fat in the skin. Then we talked about com general complexion and blemishes from creamy, smooth kapha skin to dull uh, vata skin to ruddy skin, uh, pimples, uh, whiteheads and blackheads, uh, as well as some causes of acne, including ama, oiliness, sweetness, and uh, heat, mixed with heat. We've talked about how uh, freckles, mole, and moles can be related to the liver. And, uh, and then we also talked about warts um, and how warts are really an infection. Uh, finally, we talked about skin tags, spider nevi, uh, and the location of various skin uh, disorders.